Like the first response team of America itself, the mission of this nonprofit emergency aid group is direct and to the point. It's really important for the first response team to live up to its name and be one of the first groups on the ground after these storms strike. When we come in there hours after a strike and the light towers go up and roads start being cleared and, and shelters start being powered up, the community begins to realize that there's hope. Tad Agolia, the team's founder, wasn't always first to the scene. His commercial disaster cleanup company made him a millionaire in his 20s, but left him searching for more. I made a lot of money and I was miserable. We would come into natural disasters, usually about two months after they would happen. We'd see houses with water lines on them. I would see whole homes in the middle of roads. I thought to myself, I bet there's a need on day one and that first week after these storms strike. In 2007, Tad formed the nonprofit First Response Team of America and poured his life savings into the huge array of equipment that his team now hauls across the country to assist at storm sites. Every disaster is different. You never really know what you're going to need, so you got to bring in a lot of gear with you to be able to handle different situations. This 53-foot trailer has a lot of gear mounted on it. We got a 2,000 gallon per minute water pump that we use to clear out low-lying areas of cities and basements of places like hospitals and houses. We've got a generator that'll run nursing homes, emergency rooms, shelters as big as a Walmart. We've got a multi-terrain loader that's got rubber tracks that can go through mud and through water and bring in essentials that we need into disasters. This rig here is our grapple truck. It's gonna do an amazing amount of work. It's got a crane on it that we use to clear roads it holds 120 cubic yards of debris, which is about 22 dump trucks in one rig. If there's a, a three-story home in the middle of the road, we can disassemble it in 15 minutes and create a way into the community. The rams are what we need to get the disasters quickly and to carry in the essentials we need. You never know what you're going to come up against when you respond to a disaster. The roads could be full of water, full of mud, full of trees. We've got to figure out a way to get in. Sometimes you've got to go over, around, in between stuff. We need a powerful truck to respond to disasters and bring in the essentials needed on day one. Timmy, make sure this thing's in four wheel drive. In the downtime before storm season, team members hone their skills on this massive equipment and rescue gear at home base in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We do a lot of training, rope rescue training, swift water rescue training, ice rescue training. We got our boots, our gloves, our dry suits, our helmets, life preservers. Let's get the hovercraft and get out there. A lot of people think hovercrafts are cool, and they are, but they're really dangerous. They go where helicopters and traditional boats can't. A lot of times people get stranded on bridges and cars and their homes, and you're gonna have to fight that current to get to them. So the best way to fight the current is to fly over it. We are ready to deploy at any given moment. Being quick to respond means staying on top of the latest natural disasters. The team stays in really close contact with Dr. Greg Forbes and some of the other great folks at the Weather Channel. Hi, Dr. Forbes. I just got your email that there's going to be a Torcon value of 8 in Oklahoma. Yeah, I'm giving this a Torcon 8, and that's pretty high for even two days in advance. This looks like a slam dunk in terms of uh, a bad tornado outbreak. Forecasting a storm, then tracking its path, allows the team to pre-position themselves close to its potential impact area and respond almost immediately. Many times I've been asked by community leaders, how in the world did you know this just happened to us? How did you get here so fast? And we say, well, Dr. Forbes of the Weather Channel. The first response team of America has assisted at more than 40 mega storm sites. The efforts save lives, restore hope, and is entirely free of charge. Stop your lives to help people like me. I can't thank you enough. This year, they will spend up to nine months on the road, traveling to more natural disasters, helping more communities in need. This looks like a pretty old picture to me, so it might be somebody's grandfather. Glad we were able to find him for these people. When you go to disasters and they're people say thank you, it, it kind of it makes you feel good and makes you feel like you did something worthwhile in this life. When you come into a disaster and 
and you see the destruction and you see how people's lives are changed so dramatically in the flash of an eye and be able to help them piece together their life again, you can tell you're making a real difference in these people's lives. I want to be there for people when life is at its worst. This is part of being human, to see a need and to try to do something about it.